Hello dear brothers, dear sisters, and everyone who's listening and studying the Bible with us. I'm glad you're joining us and let's continue in 1 John 5 verse 5. Who is it that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? 1 John 5 verse 4 and 5 provide a progression of what it takes to achieve victory over the world. In verse 4a, it's a new birth in God. In verse 4b, it's our faith. And in this verse, in verse 5, it's believing that Jesus is the Son of God. Okay, let's dive deeper into this. Overcoming is a powerful word in Greek, Nikaio, based on the Greek goddess Nike, or as we know it as Nike, who has deity of speed, strength and victory. The word literally means to subdue, conquer or gain the victory. As we recall in the New Testament, the term the world usually means the system, ideology and morals of this world. As William MacDonald, a prolific theologian, states it, the world as the cosmos does not mean the planet on which we live or the world of nature about us it is the system with man which man has built up for himself in an effort to satisfy the lust of the eyes the lust of the flesh and the pride of life in this system there is no room for god or his son therefore Jesus told us in John 16:33, I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Here in 1 John, we learn that provided that we follow Jesus, we too are fully able and expected to overcome the world as well. And second, when the Bible uses the term belief, it does not mean to intellectually accept, rather it means to put your complete trust into. I like to think of it as betting your life on. And Paul tells us in Romans 10, 9, If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. James tells us over and over that belief is dead if they are not followed by actions. If you think about it, if you really believe in something, it is insanity to act contrary to that belief. For example, if you believe in gravity, a normal person doesn't jump off a cliff. And to overcome the world, we are told that we must believe. So, what are we to believe? So, we are to believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Throughout throughout the Gospels and the rest of the New Testament, Jesus is called the Son of God. Although, Jesus often referred to himself as the Son of Man. He also proclaimed himself to be the Son of God as well. Mark 14 verse 61 and 62 tells us but Jesus remained silent and gave no answer again the high priest asked him are you the Messiah the son of the blessed one I am said Jesus and you will see the son of man sitting at the right hand of the mighty one and coming on the clouds of heaven in today's world the thought of Jesus really being the son of God is scoffed at The Jews consider Jesus a failed messiah. Islam believes that he was a prophet who was supplanted by a greater prophet, Mohammed. But Jesus proclaimed himself to be the son of God and either we believe it or we do not. If we believe it, then everything changes and everything he told us is the absolute truth. Therefore, to overcome the world, We must fully believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Brothers, 
In his classic book, The Cost of Discipleship, Dietrich Bonhoeffer writes, Cheap grace is the grace we bestow on ourselves. Cheap grace is the preaching of forgiveness without requiring repentance. Baptism without church discipline, communion without conf confession. Cheap grace is grace without discipleship, grace without the cross, and grace without Jesus Christ living and incarnate. We cannot, or sorry, we can worry that the church has watered down the gospel so much that it would hardly be recognizable to the Lord. We often proclaim that if someone recites the sinner's prayer, then they are automatically saved just by saying the words. You have your fire insurance, but the change part and the action part seems to be optional. Cheap grace refuses to change, refuses to sacrifice and refuses to live or die for Jesus. Have you ever found yourself cheapening grace? Ask God to reveal to you where in your walk you tend to take shortcuts or fall into compromise with the world. Then repent and change direction and ask God for forgiveness. Um, I want to thank you for studying the Bible with us. Please um, feel free to read again the description. And uh, I definitely hope, you, hope to see you the next time. May God bless you.